My voice has returned. Yep, it's probably obvious from the way I'm talking right now, but I have recovered from last episode. So my voice is fully working now. I really, really messed up my voice last time. I really apologize for that. I don't scream that often, so after screaming that much last time, my voice was a mess for like hours after recording. Like I could barely, you know, say anything without it sounding, you know, like, you know, I'm gasping for air. Wow. Yeah, I really messed up my voice last time. So I'm going to try not to go as hard as I did last time this time because that could actually be really damaging to someone's voice. And um, if I damage my voice, that is not going to be a fun time for me because I'm supposed to be a Let's Read channel and uh, I need my voice to read. So I'm not going to wreck my voice. I'm not going to wreck my voice again. I'm probably going to do that this episode again, aren't I? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is by playing. And there's gonna be creepy- Yep, there is the creepy laughter, I knew it was coming. <sighs> I hate creepy laughter in games. It just makes me uncomfortable. And now, let's introduce ourselves to Pauline. Alright, that does it for today's shopping. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Snack time! There's nothing better than having a ham sandwich in the park. Uh, oh dear. Maybe I should lower my voice when I'm talking to myself? But it's so nice out. I just can't help myself. Does the weather have anything to do with talking to oneself? Maybe. Not important! Food, food! If he were here, it would taste even better. Oh? I wonder when I'll get to see him next. Oh, come on. Well, I'm taking a guess now that, um, the merchant that was just killed by Bestia is this someone she's referring to. Pauline! Pauline! I'm gonna assume that she's elderly because this woman right here, Pauline, she seems to be a young woman, so maybe her mom might be getting to her middle ages, so I'm just gonna use an old person voice. Yeah, because why not? Why not? I don't really get to any practice with any elderly voices. Plus, it might be a little bit more pleasant on my throat because, uh, I feel like I'm gonna be getting to Beastia soon, and that will make my voice roughen up. So, let's, you know, channel my inner grandma. There we go. Pauline! Pauline! There you are! Mm. Uh, oh dear! What's got you so frazzled, Mom? Uh-oh. Ah! Oh, Pauline! Huh? What is it? Did something happen? What's the matter, Mom? <laughs> Mom! Pauline. This isn't like you, Mom. It's not like you at all. Tell me, what happened? I told you to stay away from men who trade. Oh, no! Oh, is this the scene where Pauline's gonna figure out that the merchant is bad? Uh-oh. Huh? Oh, Pauline! My dear daughter! Why must God be so cruel to such a sweet girl? You're hurting me, Mom! Don't squeeze so tight! What's gotten into you? Listen carefully, Pauline. You must be calm and hear me out, understood? Huh? Your lover, the beloved man you wait for, uh, is dead. Oh. Oh. We're cutting that scene off right here? The twisted road to slaughter. Oh, here we go. Uh-oh. The twisted road to slaughter. 
the beast's humanity began slipping away from him after that encounter. He had returned to the thing I had found in the cellar. Actually, he prowled the mansion's halls, looking more barbaric than ever. He wants more people to kill. Despite all the effort he had put into learning to act like a human, he now ripped the velvet curtains off the wall, howling shrilly, stomping back and forth through the hallways and ravaging the garden. I watched him intently, though from a distance. Well, if you approach him, you might be on the other end of his, uh, sword? I'm guessing that he killed someone with a sword. Yeah, he killed the merchant with a sword, so... Is he walking around the mansion with a sword in his hand, looking for someone else to kill? Bestia was not merely a beast, but an out-of-control, bloodthirsty beast. Just a few days ago, we had been tending the dark garden together, but that was no longer possible. I was quite disappointed. Eventually, Bestia discovered my hiding place. Oh no. I had not felt regret in a very long time, but I felt deep regret in that moment. More! Hmm. Don't have enough! Not enough! I need more! I need more! I must satisfy these urges! Uh, I don't like the way you're wording that. Are you saying peace was not enough to sate you? Did I mishear you when you asked for peace? I was mistaken. Asking for peace won't solve anything. Blood! Despair! I filled with terror. These are the things I need. And I've always known it! You said this mansion fulfills people's desires. Then... Then... Give me prey! No more hares! Live humans! Why did I ever teach him to speak human language? <laughs> Before long, the mansion granted his wish. Oh shit. Oh shit. Once a week, a villager or a traveling merchant from somewhere would wander into the forest, ending up on, at the mansion on the cliff. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I am, I'm having a sinking suspicion that um, at any moment now, Pauline might get the other end of, you know, BCS rage. Oh no. I was starting to like Pauline from her first introduction, but you know what? You know what, I don't think anyone involved with the story of the mansion is gonna, you know, be fine at towards the end. <laughs> Once a week, a villager or a traveling merchant from somewhere would wander into the forest, ending up at the mansion on the cliff. Though something felt suspicious about the man who greeted them at the door, on the surface, he looked like a proper nobleman. So they all eventually chose to trust Bestia. The mansion had an air of loneliness about it, but it was adequate to provide rest for their weary feet. There was food and a bed, and most comforting of all, there were other people. The lord of the house treated lost souls like esteemed guests. He poured them fine wine and had me cook for them. No one suspected, in the slightest, that he was a beast. Until he learns that they have a knife on them. He put on a reasonably convincing act. Because yes, I had taught him how to behave like a master. The visitors all went to bed, contented. But, as I am sure you can imagine, master, they will never see the light of day again. <laughs> yep, he kills them. The penetratingly bright sunlight, particular to this area, er, area. 
A beast! It's a beast! You disgusting creature! You hideous monster! Kill it! If that's how your humans want to do things, then I'll play your little game. I'll play it even better than you. I'll kill you. I'll slaughter you! Holy fuck! Oh my god! Holy shit! Oh my god, that is a brutal image! Holy shit! Wow! Wow, are those his eyes bulging out? Holy crap! Holy crap! And those teeth! Those are the most detailed teeth I've ever seen in a game so far. Holy shit! Holy shit, that teeth! They're good teeth, I'm gonna be honest here. They seem in all good condition. There is some gaps in them. There are some gaps in your teeth, um, guy who's about to be killed. There are some gaps. But other than that, your teeth are pretty solid. Your teeth are pretty solid. It's kind of a shame that you're gonna be dead, but maybe, um, Bestia keeps the skeletons because those are pretty good looking teeth. I sound like a freaking serial killer, what the hell? No! Please, no! That's it! Cry for me! Beg for your life! Pray for my mercy! Weep! And struggle! And suffer! And die! No one understands! No one can possibly understand my despair! What did I ever do? Was it because I'm a beast? When did I become a beast? Why do beasts have to die? Because... Oh, not because. Beasts. Beasts are savage, and so they must die. I'm a beast, therefore I'm savage. In which case, I'll kill them. I'll show them what makes a beast so terrifying. <laughs> Last time. Uh, I'm gonna take a drink before I read it, actually. Yeah, I'm not gonna wreck my voice this time. I'm not gonna do that this time. Moonlight crept through the torn velvet curtains, shining down upon the blood soaked beast. It was a sight that would entice terror in anyone. Look at this! No one can stand up to me. Humans have no chance against bees! <laughs> more! I need more! Give me more prayers! The mansion continued to sate the beast's demented craving, sending not one, but multiple vi villagers into his claws. Into these blood-stained walls, off which echoed his monstrous house. Stop! Please! I'm begging you! Spare me! Oh god! Sorry! I'm not familiar with your god. Beasts have no need for gods! Of gods! I have a wife and son at the back of the village! Please, let me return to them! Instead, bring them to me! So they can join you in hell! <laughs> you know what? I shouldn't be as amused as I am right now, but I am amused and I just predicted that he that he was gonna say that. Why don't you bring them back to me? I'll send them to the same place you're going. To hell! Hey! Oh! Oh, wow. Um... Wait, that's interesting. Wait, is this the beast or is this someone begging for their life? This looks 
Actually, I can't tell. I can't tell. Is this someone begging for their life, or is this the beast smiling at them? Interesting. Interesting. I, I, I am with the child. Please, let me go. Are you now? In that case, I'll kill the baby first. YOU DAMNED MONSTER! <laughs> that's right! I AM A MONSTER! That's what he, yeah, that's, that's what he was saying, yeah. AND BY KILLING, NO ONE CAN DEFY ME! I HAVE TO SHOW THE WORLD THAT I, THAT BEASTS ARE THE MOST frightening THINGS ON THIS EARTH! The beast began to change his style making sick banquets out of his kills. Some days, he would tie guests up in, his, in the cellar, playing with them for hours until they finally died. Some days, he would drain them of their blood and bathe in it. Well, at least he's staying clean. Actually, that does not work. He's not staying clean. Well, can you rinse off in the blood of your enemies? No, wait, the blood would dry. Yeah, the blood would dry and you would smell like blood. That's how that works, right? Yeah, blood, Yeah, their blood would dry on you if you don't, you know, wipe yourself off afterwards. And even then, I don't think you can completely wipe yourself of blood without, you know, using water as well as, you know, a towel. Or, you know, some scrubbing surfaces. Why am I, ex why am I talking about that? This video is going to make me out to be a, a serial killer or something. <laughs> Some days, he would spread them out on the table and feast upon them. Every week, another atrocious party, he did everything imaginable. As a faithful servant of this house, I am confident I can do most anything I am asked. Though, you can truly imagine my surprise at having to use the cooking skills that I learned while serving the Flax, Flax and Hare family to do that. I can only wonder if it actually tasted any good. Ah, he ate the bodies. Bestia's particular sword was always with him for his twisted banquets of self-gratification. However, much blood stained it. It never lost a sheen. Interesting. They use a sword. Oh, wait a second. I think I caught on to something. I think I'm catching on to something. I think... The plot twist of this story is going to be Bestia was a human the whole time. Oh my god, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Bestia was a human this whole time. They use a sword? Yeah, they were a human this whole time. Bestia is a human. Oh, yes, I think that's going to be the reveal of this storyline. But there's got to be something more. There's got to be something more than Bestia just being a human. It was as though the sword drank the f drank of the flesh of humans. Master, can you imagine just how wretched I felt? The mansion, once a beautiful sight to behold, reeked of death and acrimony. The stench of running flesh seeped up from the cellar. Even the years it spent forsaken and in ruins were preferable to that. Or perhaps... I only had myself to blame. It was I who, who had invited the beast into the mansion. More! More! Not enough! This isn't enough to satisfy me! But Bestia still sought to hold more of his perverse parties. Lost villagers were no longer enough to quell his urges. He was, indeed, a genuine beast. And in time, this is what he began to wish for. Can't you get me any better prey? Something truly exquisite! The perfect prey to quench this maddening thirst of mine! Do you know what he meant when he asked for the perfect prey, Master? Perhaps a hero, someone courageous enough to stand up to him, with whom he could enjoy a battle to the death. 
perhaps a dazzling, dazzling young nymph, to satisfy his other primal urges. Yeah, I was slightly thinking that those urges are also going to be mentioned with the beast, because most people who do murderous rages also have other urges. Or perhaps what he wanted was not human at all, but a demon or a phantom. Fuck. I would soon find out, as the mansion had tempted to grant his wish, bringing yet another guest to the house on the cliff. Uh oh. I I'm getting scared for the maid. I'm getting scared for the maid. I'm really hoping that uh, Bestia does not do anything to the maid. How she sees the world. Oh. <gasps> Is Pauline going to be the challenger? Oh, you know what? I would love an epic showdown between Pauline and the Beast because that seems to be what might be happening because we were introduced to Pauline, Mershon died. This sounds like the beginning of a heroic story arc. Her lover is dead and she starts figuring, figuring out about a Beast who's been killing merchants and villagers. She learns about this. Maybe, maybe, maybe. She, she is... She is the lover of a merchant, and the merchant might have been, you know, way far away from home. But she might hear about this, and then she might, you know, form together a group or go by herself to, you know, vanquish the beast, Dracula style. Oh, yay! You know what? Maybe we're getting a Dracula storyline, but from the point of view of Dracula. I don't know why I'm comparing the storyline to Dracula now, because right here, this story could also be interpreted as a... You know, sort of a, uh, maybe a, possibly a soon-to-be Beauty and the Beast storyline, because it's heavily implied there might be romance in this story as well. But it's also implied to be a werewolf sort of story. A monster that's killing villagers? That sounds like a setup for a werewolf story, but with the inclusion of Pauline, Pauline might form together a group to vanquish the evil, aka what happened in Dracula, the original Dracula book. This might be a Dracula storyline, but... If the beast is not fully a beast, but a human, because I have a feeling that the beast is human, this could be also a combination of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Why am I talking about classical, classical horror novels from the 1800s? You know what? You know what? I'm making way too many comparisons, but I, yeah, I definitely can see a lot of inspirations here because I love horror stories. I love horror stories, so that's why I'm making these connections. And also, this song fits. This song fits with the feeling that, um, I'm thinking this is going. This kind of has, like, a feeling. Yeah, I feel like this is, you know, ha has the exact feeling of a tragic Dracula story along with a tragic Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde story. Though, the thing is, I said Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde with the bees, and I I'm referring to the original story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because in the original story, like, against what everyone believes, Mr. Hyde was not an alternative personality for Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll made a potion so that he could change his appearance, but the whole time, Mr. Hyde was not another personality. That was just Dr. Jekyll just, you know, letting out his primal urges. So, the whole thing about, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde being an alternative personality of, you know, uh, Dr. Jekyll, that's not actually what the story was about originally. Originally, it was about Dr. Jekyll making a potion so that he could change his appearance, so that he could let out his primal urges, and throughout the story, he starts realizing he's having much more fun letting out his primal urges, but the side of him that's still thinking of good is just like, no, I should not, you know, let my primal urges, you know, win out, aka Mr. Hyde and me win out. Oh man, I'm talking way too much about Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, but I'm just gonna say this now. Read the original story, because the story was actually a commentary on the limits of, you know, whether or not a good human could still turn bad. Or, you know, not, not exactly that. It's not a story of good and bad, it's just a story about humans in general, that we all keep back our primal urges, and when we finally start letting them out slowly but slowly, we start wanting to do it, wanting to do it more. Kind of like what's going on with Beast Joe right now. After killing that mer merchant, he's just letting out more of his, you know, primal urges out on people. Like, after one murder, he realizes, this is a lot of fun. 
I want to be a beast now! And he starts killing more and more. If we use the Dr. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde analogy, that could be what's going on here. A tragic Dr. and Jekyll story with Paul Lee's storyline. I'm, you know, I'm really hoping for the Dracula storyline. A group of people to go against Bestia, even though I'm going to be divided about Bestia because I'm going to feel bad for Bestia a little bit, but also not because Bestia killed a lot of people. So I don't really think there's much excuse in killing a bunch of people. For, you know, satiating your primal urges, but at the same time, I'm gonna, you know, feel some sympathies towards Bestia, because Bestia's, you know, obviously having troubles with himself. But at the same time, though, I'm really liking the whole storyline of a possible, you know, group of people getting together, like they did in Dracula. If the devil guides us, if God guides us, then perhaps... I could accept that this was fate. Then it makes sense that I am here. Hmm. Is anyone? Is anyone there? I've lost my way. Would you please be so kind as to spare me a little food? Ah, there. There it is. There comes the poor little offering. They never learn. They just keep coming again and again. The mansion keeps granting my wish. I would be glad to provide you with some food. And you are welcome to stay the night. Get some rest. I will have a room prepared. Huh. Okay, so the names are the same. Is this the same person from the six from 1603? Is this the same person from 1603? Her hair is shorter, but hold on, wait. She had a hundred years. Maybe. Is this the same person? Is she kind of like the maid because the names are the same? Or is maybe this is a descendant of the white-haired girl? Oh, uh, oh, I see what's going on here. I mean, she's on the title screen of this game, the white-haired girl. So it would make sense if she's similar to the maid in regards of, you know, somehow being somewhat immortal in between all the stories. Yeah, you know what? This is probably a similar or the same person or a descendant. Either way, the girl from 1603 and this girl now from 1707. Yeah, they're definitely somewhat related. Then, I suppose I shall take you up on your generosity. I have been wandering for a very, very long time. One hundred years? Was that, Master? You recognize her? <laughs> I mean, I'm not automatically gonna assume that this is the same person, but... Knowing how stories can be told sometimes, I think it's very likely that this is the same person from 1603, or a descendant. Though I might be wrong, I might be making quick assumptions, but... Come on. Narrative-wise, it would make sense. I imagine you would. That white hair, those red eyes, skin the color of freshly fallen snow, and that flossy, beautiful visage. You could not possibly mistake her for anyone else. And no, it is not someone who happens to resemble her. Yep. Yep. Descendant or her herself. I can understand why you would be why would you be surprised, Master? I'm gonna repeat that. I can understand why you would be surprised, Master. At first, I could hardly believe my own eyes. The wanderer knocking on the door that day was the very same fair skinned young woman who visited the mansion so many years earlier. The white-haired girl, 
must must have spent many, many a night in the forest. Her crystalline skin was covered in red scratches from where she had brushed against stray branches and tree bark. She had even lost her shoes and was standing there barefooted, looking quite disheartened. But that she did not make her but that did not make her any less beautiful. In fact, you could just imagine the dense forest canopy parting to allow the sun to shine down upon her. Hmm? I think we might be getting some Beauty and the Beast. Maybe. The Beast appeared, surprised by her angelic beauty as well. It seemed as though all the madness strained from him in that moment. Mm. He said nothing, but his eyes told all. He was entranced by the sight of her ruby-dyed irises and her pure white hair. Don't know if he's fallen in love with her in a pure sense or in a sense of his urges. Um, maybe you should start running, white haired girl. I think you might need to start running. I don't know. I can't tell. I can't tell. I'm actually getting really scared for the white-haired girl now because... Oh no, oh no. Pardon? Uh, I am a beast. This is what I asked for. Something to quench my thirst. You're allowed to be happy. But as I said, it was only for a moment. So rejoice! Imagine just how gratifying it will be to see such a beautiful woman thriving in the rolls of death! Follow me. I will have a bath drawn as well. And once the moment had passed, the beast was barely able to contain the wellspring of madness within, within himself. Oh no. He wanted nothing more than to run his sword through the white-haired girl at that very instant, to torture her to the file. Run! No! No! He tended to her wounds, served her supper, and drew a bath for her. It's gonna happen in the bath, isn't it? Or maybe not, maybe when she's asleep? Oh god, oh god, oh god. And afterwards, the beast even made to provide her with a dress to wear. No! No! Even the outfit she had only worn for one night so many years before was there, waiting for someone to put it on again. For her to put it on again. Oh no. Oh no. It's like a repeating loop for her, but with different people. He said she could choose anything she liked. She, being such a modest young woman, said she needed not such a fine attire. And what a shame that was. I too wish to see her in a dress once more. I need not such fine clothing. You need to be not modest. No. No, that's not why. Are they not your liking then? No. I just... My apologies. You are very generous. Hmm. Foolish girl. Smiley. Smiling. And calling me generous. I was simply imagining what a pretty sight it would be. The sight of her fresh blood splattered on it. The sight of her life slipping away, slipping away in it. I am glad that, after wandering for so long, I ended up here in this mansion. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. I mean, she had a big storyline in 1603, 
she's probably gonna have a made-up storyline in 1707 if she doesn't, you know, imply anything of her remembering 1603. Like, if she remembers 1603, I can imagine why she might like being at the mansion. Actually, this other theory I have could also apply to, you know, her, even if she remembers 1603. So I'm gonna say a quick theory real quick before I continue on with this chapter, because I have a feeling, I have a feeling, I'm gonna say this before it's revealed, so I might sound like a fool right now, but I have a feeling she came to the mansion on purpose. She might be from the village, or she might have heard about this mansion from people nearby the area. Now, whoever comes to that mansion never returns. From the way she's acting, I have a lot of feelings that um she purposely came here to die. I think that's what she's thinking. She personally came here to the mansion to die because she heard that anyone who visited the mansion will be killed. If you go by the idea that it's not the mansion beckoning people or beckoning the white-haired girl, if you go by a different explanation, well, okay, it's probably still the mansion beckoning people because the mansion's definitely, you know, calling people in, calling, you know, these stories to come out. But I think the story in general, this one in particular, if she has a backstory like she did in 1603, and if that backstory is slightly different, or the same, she came to the mansion to die. I have a feeling that she came to this mansion to die, from the way she's acting. From the way she's acting, I can kind of feel some indication that she is, you know, preparing herself, or she knows what she's doing, and she knows that, and is, and is expecting to be killed by the beast. I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. I feel like that's what's going to happen. And I feel like the Beast is not going to want to kill her by that revelation. I feel like that's what's going on here. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. I'm not 100% sure. I might be absolutely wrong. But I have a feeling that's why the white-haired girl is here. Or maybe right before the sword is swung out on her when she's asleep, she flips out her own sword and blocks <laughs> the Beast's blade. Honestly, that would be an interesting story as well, of her, you know, pulling out her own sword when the beast is about to swing down and kill her. She pulls out her own sword and, <laughs> and she blocks his plane and they go through a sword fight. <laughs> but no, no, jokes aside, I feel like she came to the mansion to die. I am glad that, after wandering for so long, I ended up here, in this mansion. And in a few hours... You'll be feeling the exact opposite. Get all the rest you need. I shall see you again in the morning. I won't. I thank you. Bisya then made his way out of the girl's bad chamber. His mask came crumbling off after only taking a few steps. <laughs> there! That's precisely what I wanted. Ah, just imagining how such a beautiful woman will scream. How long she'll beg for her life. How, indeed, not how long. Well, that too. Hey! Hey! Are you there? The mansion has given me the perfect offering. Hey, hey! Is she not here? Huh. Is someone there? Yes. I came by to ask if there was anything you needed. I cannot offer you anything as extravagant. Not like before, but I am here to provide you with anything in my capacity. I appreciate the offer, but I need nothing. Being allowed to stay the night is more than enough. Do you work here in the mansion? Yes, indeed I do. I have been here for a very, very long time. Huh. A very long time? Um, you might think this is an odd question, but 
Have we met before? Something about you seems familiar. Huh. Why does everyone in this game not remember me? And I get the feeling that I have been in this mansion before. Yes, we have met. It was quite some time ago, though. When was it? I, um... Uh... It was. An unimaginably long time ago. Do you remember a boy and girl with, with flaxen hair? Flaxen hair? Uh... Hmm? I apologize. My memory fails me. Do you not remember me either? Uh... This does give a lot of indication that the master, aka us, is the white-haired girl. This could give some indication. Yeah, I think this is giving some indication that we might be the white-haired girl. I see. You should probably not push yourself to remember them. There were joyous times, and there were less than joyous times. But would you be so kind as to answer one question? What might your name be? Yep! I think the white-haired girl is the master because she doesn't remember her, her name, the master doesn't remember their name. I think the white-haired girl is us. The one that the maid's telling the story to. Maybe. Maybe. My name. My name is... Come on. Come on! Why can't you tell us your name? Why is it blanked out? I see. So you are... Again. Again? You should get some rest. I will make tea for you in the morning. Have fun dying. Also. Hmm? Go on. Close your eyes. But Bestia never waited for morning to come. With his sword that smelled of blood hanging from his hip, the beast slowly, ever so slowly, crept towards the room where the white-haired girl slept. The time was soon approaching, approaching for the bloodthirsty beast to paint the walls with the young woman's blood, to turn her bedchamber into a gourd spider altar upon which he would offer her to the devil. <laughs> However, when he opened the door, the beast could hardly believe his eyes. Huh. She was awake. She was wit ready. She was getting ready for him. She was getting ready for him. She was not asleep, but sitting there as if expecting Bestia's arrival. Why are you awake? Did you not go to sleep? I heard footsteps, so I... And what were you planning to do when I got here? Huh. Surely, you didn't think we'd simply have a nice midnight chat. I was hoping to ask what it was that you wanted. To ask what it was I wanted? Do you even realize what you're saying? Can you not see what's in my hand? You know exactly what I came here to do. Huh. Aren't you going to beg? Aren't you going to pee, plead for your life? Aren't you going to ask me not to kill you? If it's necessary. But is that what you want? What I want is something much, much more gratifying than your pleas. I want to hold a banquet. It is not enough, no matter what I do. It's not enough. But you, you will be enough to satisfy me, to quench this unholy thirst. 
to completely, wholly, fill me to the bursting point. Can you stop talking and kill me already? <laughs> okay, now, now it's mad at me, now it's mad at me. I'm sorry. You want to know what I desire? I desire to devour you! Ah! Isia shoved the girl back, slamming her into the mattress. He then stabbed the sword through the sheath beside her, looking down upon the girl, the moonlight at his back. Clenching her slender throat with one hand, he drew a sword once more, holding the tip but inches from her nose. No matter how much blood it drank, the sword continued to shine gl gloriously, as though it had just come from the forge. It was awe-inspiring. Terror... Tear shitting it was uh, it was an awe inspiring. Let me just get a drink of water because I am not reading right. Alright, I just needed to do a throat reset. It was an awe awe inspiring tear shitting blade, the sight of which would cause anyone to imagine the misfortune about to befall them. Go on! Mock me! Ridicule the hideous barbaric! Beast standing before you! From the moment you saw me, you start me unsettling, no? But you avoided your eyes! Because I had no. Because I had food for you! Because I gave you a place to rest! You pretended not to notice the beast! This is retribution! Retribution for your damn humans! So beg for your life like they all do! Cry! Plead for mercy! If you say, if you say that you are ugly, then I must be equally ugly. Huh? What? What came from the girl's mouth was neither a plea, nor an insult, nor a scream. Full-grown men had wept before him, and yet this slight young woman did not. Despite this terrifying beast being upon her, Moments away from extinguishing her life, even I almost shrieked in fright. Bestia could neither believe his eyes, nor his ears. Do you not fear me? Can you not see what I'm, what I'm about to do to you? What am I to be afraid of? I'm threatening to murder you! To whip your intestines out with these claws and watch you die in agony! I enjoy it more than anything in the world! Filling others' hearts with fear! The more lives I take, the more I enjoy it! I am a beast, driven by madness! What he expected was for the beautiful girl before him to desperately implore him for mercy. He wanted nothing more than to see despair seep into every corner of her red eyes. For he believed that it would be true it would be a truly sublime moment. Euphoria, unlike anything he had experienced before. Bestia prodded her with a singular sword, poking a slit in skin smoother than self silk. Huh. You mean to take mercy on me, because you see me as pitiful. But she did not do as the beast wished. She looked up at him with sympathy rather than fear. This rattled the beast. He had never once seen anyone respond to him that way. What possessed you to say that? What on earth is going through your head? Mercy? Mercy? Do you not comprehend the situation? How can you be so cold? Huh. Scream! Cry and shout! Beg for me to spare you! Throw yourself at my feet! Throw yourself at my feet! Otherwise, I... I... I'm a beast! A beast that never tries to keep tires of killing! To me. You appear to be a person. <laughs> You're lying. You listen to the things I say. 
the battery of your camera is about to, about to run out. Um, you should probably change it. Yeah. <laughs> you listen to the things I say, and you respond with your own words. I, I was taught how to speak. Uh, I I I I am a beast who speaks human language. But you think. You use your mind to come up with responses, and you hesitate. If I, if, if, if I, if, 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 if I'm a, if I'm a human, then why do they disparage me so? What, why, why do they reject me and try to kill me? Because I'm a beast! A repulsive beast! That's why, isn't it? I... I will do nothing to hurt you. We are alike. Uh, alike? Don't be ridiculous. How can you say we're alike when you're as, as beautiful as you are? There is nothing beautiful about me. What value does outward appearance have? Y you... You have suffered much persecution. Let me repeat that line. I stuttered too much for the white-haired girl for that being one of her lines. You have suffered much persecution, which is why you tremble in fear. I am not trembling. I am not afraid. I can hear the, cr the cries of your heart. What, what on earth is wrong with you? Why are you not afraid? Why do you not scream in terror? I am afraid, but more than fear. I feel like I know now what my role is. Y y your role? If you will have me, then I would like to remain here in the mansion. Are you mad? I will eventually kill you! Torture you! Put you through hell! Make you wish you were never born. That does not change my mind. Please, allow me to stay. I find it very hard to believe that what you want deep down is to hurt people. And I get the feeling that I am meant to be here. That is my role. <gasps> Bisya was at a loss. He was. Perhaps, afraid of this girl who did not fear him, and even attempted to embrace him. She behaved too differently from all the other humans he knew of, who only ever harassed and pushed them away. Why are you so kind to me? To this beast? This murderer? Bestia's sword slipped from his hand, hitting the hard floor with a metallic whine. When the sound died down, the white-haired girl extended her hands for the beast with the utmost of affability. 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 That's the word. Affability. Her fingers were white as freshly fallen snow, something this area never saw. They traced his distinctive frame. frame. They ran along his unusually shaped nose. They slid across his rough, yellowed skin. They drifted around his rather small eyes. The beast trembled once more, this time not out of a twisted desire from deep within, but from the unimaginable comfort of physical, of physical contact. Her fingers moved so gently, so pleasantly, wrapping him in their warmth. Are you crying? A single teardrop slid down the arc of her finger. Looking into her clear eyes, Bestia came to a realization. And at the same time, he, he felt somewhat dismayed. You are without sight. Hmm? Taken in the throes of his primal urges, the beast had not noticed. But there was an emptiness in the girl's eyes. She appeared to be gazing far into the distance, not focused on the man despite being close enough to touch him. Tears had begun running down Bestia's cheeks earlier, 
when she had called him a person. But it was not until one of those droplets had slid across the back of her finger that she had realized she would, indeed, have no need of extravagant dresses. After all, she could not see what she was wearing. That is correct. I am blind. Okay, I was not expecting that. Okay, I was not expecting that, actually. <laughs> I was not expecting that she would be blind. Holy crap, wow. Yeah, I, I was not expecting that. <laughs> but whoever decided that reality is only that which can be seen? I know not what appearance I have. In the darkness, everything is one. Everything is as one. There is no difference between beast and man. If you are a beast, then I too must be a beast. To call this girl a beast would be paramount to eating sugar and assisting it with salt. Do pardon the trite analogy, please. But you know rather well, master, that the white-haired girl was not at all what you would call a beast. Not simply in appearance, but all the way down to her core, there was nothing beastly about her. Her words brought him faint pain, but the beast still felt, on some level, level, that he wanted to keep her at his side to see what would happen. His next words were in large part impulsive. I... I am grateful that you cannot see. Serenity. And I'm gonna save Serenity for next time. And it seems like the white haired girl lived to experience another day. Um, wow. Uh, dang it. I almost said the wrong, <laughs> the absolute wrong thing to say. <laughs> I was about to say live to see another day. God damn it. I did. No, that's not funny. That's not funny. Oh my god. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an asshole. <laughs> Okay, okay.